Welcome to another episode of the Healing Chronic Illness Summit. And today we have another special guest. Today we have Lauren Henry from Hawaii, beautiful Hawaii. <laughs> We're very thankful to have you here on the show because you're probably one of the most well-known medical medium promoters. And yeah, I guess... That's so you're one of the first ones that everyone knew was doing medical medium right away. <laughs> That's so funny to think about. Um, but thank, yeah, thank you for having me on here. And it's just, yeah, um, I, I have followed you since the beginning of my journey. Yeah, me um, too. Yeah, because, you know, you, I remember when I started following you, you already were doing like a lot of raw vegan stuff and you had like a lot of, recipes and inspiring posts um so i was like i'm just gonna follow her like she looks like she knows what she's doing <laughs> <laughs> i totally <Yeah>. didn't <laughs> yeah because because in the beginning like i didn't know i mean i knew some things because i was really into health and wellness already for years um but with being like vegan and um you know, pretty much mostly raw vegan besides like potatoes and I don't know, other cooked vegetables. Um, that was the first time I'd really ever done that. So it was all new to me. So I needed lots of inspiration from other people. And you were one of those people who I got oh, it from. Oh, I'm feeling honored. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thank true. You. And your, your posts, they're always so colorful. And yeah, yeah, you're always very like willing to share your recipes. Um, always. I've always appreciated that. That makes me very happy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more about yourself. So how did you get started on the medical medium? What brought you there? And tell us a little bit more about your story so that yeah. people get to know you better. Okay. Yeah. So um, I had found medical medium in 2015 when his first book came out. And I, at that point, I had been trying to use different diets to like heal myself. And because I had had years of symptoms like digestive issues and brain fog and um, uh, like hormonal issues, like I didn't have my period for many years and um what else and just just other weird random symptoms like being sort of like more cold all the time um you know having like test like lab test results show that like my thyroid is low um i used to have this like really bad like skin discoloration around here and it's gotten so much better um but yeah it used to be really orange and yellow right around here um, yeah, I saw that on a picture on your... Yeah, that was bad. And it was like, you know, you can't tell through a picture, but like if you were to feel it, it would be like really rough and dry. Um, and so, you know, that wasn't a debilitating symptom, but it was just one that kind of bothered me because sometimes people would be like, oh, did you go like tanning? Like, <laughs> you know, it'd be the middle of winter and I'd be like, no. <laughs> So anyway, um, I was dealing with all those things and really like the brain fog um, was, and the digestive issues were really the worst and made it so hard to like function. Um, and, and I'll also say too, with the brain fog, it, it was so, it just, it affected my life so much. Um, that it really started to give me like um, anxiety, like a lot of anxiety and depression as well. And it would just be like cycles of that. Um, and just, just like, I think too, with people who experience chronic illness for a long time and don't get better, you can feel this like stuck feeling and this hopelessness. And I think that's also what I was feeling because um, I, at that point, like, I felt like I was doing everything right. And I was doing what everyone was telling me to do. Um, and that I was reading about which that was best. And at the time, um, 
I kept reading about how great like paleo was and how great like high fat diets were and how like good for the brain that was. And, um, you know, and all these other things. And so I was like, damn, like, I, sorry. I, <laughs> I hope you don't mind I said that. Um, but I was just like, I've, I'm doing everything right. But like, honestly, I, I still don't feel that great. And in some ways I felt worse, you know, um, I was tired all the time, you know, eating like a really high fat, high protein diet um, and very low carb. So anyway, that's where I was at when I found medical medium. And um, I will also mention too, that right before coming across this book, I had been diagnosed with Lyme disease. And, um, and so at that point I was like, you know what? I found the answer to my health. Like, I don't, I'm like done with all the books and stuff and I'm done like researching and this is my answer. And then so anyway, I found out I had Lyme disease. And then a month later, um, my boss at the time, I worked at like a holistic wellness spa. And she was like, oh, Anthony William just came out with a new book. And there's a chapter about Lyme disease. Like, you should really go check it out. And at that point, I was like, oh, just another I book. <laughs> I don't want to read another book, but I'll go check it out. Like, and, uh, so, so yeah, so after work that day, I went to Barnes and Noble to just go like, look at the book and I read the Lyme disease chapter and I was like, okay, maybe I'll look at the book and then order it on Amazon if it looks good. <laughs> and I remember I read the book and my mind was just like, oh my God, it was like blown. I, every little thing made perfect sense. And I like, I was just like, I need to get this book right now. So I bought it right then and there. And, um, and I will also say too, like intuitively at that point, <clears throat> I, so I, like I said, I had been eating a paleo diet, really high fat, high protein, low carb. And intuitively I felt like I just wanted to eat no meat and like just eat like vegetables and hopefully some fruit you know i was really scared of fruit at that point and so also when i came across the medical medium book you know it was kind of like a license to be able to you know just eat fruits and vegetables and i was like okay this is i'm really gonna give this a shot like this guy says it's okay and um it's actually very healing so i was like okay i'm gonna buy this book read it and like apply it and try it and I did. And um, pretty, what was that? So how did you get started? What did you uh, incorporate first? Um, okay, so of course, because, you know, my pantry and my refrigerator was just all full of like vegetables and meats. Um, what I did was I just, well, first off, I stopped eating meat. Um, and I started lowering my fats and then, and, um, I started incorporating more fruit, but I remember at first, like not having anything at home to eat. <laughs> so I remember just eating like cauliflower and, um, and I don't know, just like whatever vegetables that I had, but like within a day I went out to the grocery store and bought, you know, celery and, um, other fruits that I could eat like bananas and you know, papaya and wild blueberries. And um, so, yeah, so the first day was like kind of hard, but then the second day when I, um, you know, actually went to the grocery store and like stocked up on stuff, then that was a little easier. And um, so pretty much like I just like went right into it. And, you know, like I said, because I was paleo, I was already like gluten-free, grain-free, um, dairy-free, um, I had been eating eggs, so I like gave up eggs immediately. Um, I hadn't really been eating beans either, so that was that was already like, you know, easy to stay away from. Um, yeah, so I uh, I had a pretty easy transition, but um, like I said, it it wasn't like I went from eating a like a like a standard American diet to medical medium overnight. Um, 
yeah, it was a whole process. And um, of course, you know, I made, I made some mistakes in the beginning. You know, I, I missed, <laughs> I missed the section in the book about nutritional yeast. And for like the first month or two, I was eating nutritional yeast and the same with vinegar. I didn't know that vinegar was like not a great thing. So I was still eating vinegar every now and then. I wasn't having a lot, but I would like sometimes use like apple cider vinegar, like on my salads, or I really liked, you know, um, making French fries and like dipping them in vinegar. So, you know, I made those mistakes in the beginning and, um, and, you know, it happens like it happens to everybody, you know, and you learn more as, as time goes on. Um, but I never gave up and, um, yeah. And, you know, and the other thing I'll say too, is like right away I started juicing celery juice and, you know, drinking more water and like instantly, like I really started to notice some shifts, like not everything healed <clears throat> all at once, but I noticed enough of a change to be like, okay, this works and I'm sticking with this. And, um, especially like with digestion. Cause one of the things that I'd always struggled with was like constipation and gas and bloating and with the celery juice and just the change in diet, um, that changed like pretty quickly <laughs> and was, uh, was a very welcome change. Um, so, so yeah, that's how I got started. So did you get, um, any kind of flare ups now and then when you, got started and then maybe after a while you some kind of symptoms returned like constipation or bloating gas yeah so um absolutely so initially i did notice a lot of detox like emotional detox um so i had a lot of anxiety in the beginning um again, like, like I said, like with my digestion, like that improving so much because that was getting so much better, you know, I wasn't going to give it up, you know, because I had anxiety. Um, so, you know, I kept, I kept going and like moving forward and, um, you know, I really connected with, with, uh, with the Instagram community And, um, and back then it was so small. There was like I don't know, maybe a handful of people doing it. And, um, yeah, it was totally different than it is today. And, but I connected with them and would like, you know, listen to the radio, you know, the radio show that he would do every week and, um, and, you know, joined his Facebook group. because at the time he used to like take, you know, people would write in questions and then he'd answer three of them each week, you know, with just things about health issues or things about, you know, the book and this information. And I remember um, people writing in and being like, I'm having more anxiety and like more emotional stuff come up um, since doing your 28 day cleanse. Like, is that normal? And I remember someone who, you know, worked for him, you know, or, or no, maybe, I don't remember if it was him or if it was someone who worked for him writing in and being like, no, that's, that's actually very normal. And so I remember really holding on to that and being like, okay, I can get through this. This is normal. Um, so, so yeah, that was initially some like a flare, I guess you could say, or like a detox thing that I experienced. And, um, and yeah, and you know, along the journey, You know, this wasn't right away, but after like a couple of months, um, I had, you know, there were times where like, you know, sort of like some constipation came back again or like some gas and bloating started to get bad again. Um, and so that's when like sort of the up and down nature of healing, um, you know, kicked in. Um, but I, I just, I always... I always stayed the course and like, I always, I always had this like underlying knowing that like, this was, this was the right thing to do. And that, um, you know, that I was really truly healing. And, um, 
Yeah. So, so that's what kept me going through like all of the difficult times. And there's probably other difficult things that I'm forgetting because at this point it was over four years ago. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, flare ups have been a real thing. You know, I never, I never really dealt with, you know, skin rashes, um, or, or like, you know, flare ups that would cause like tons of like inflammation and joint pain, which I'm very grateful for. Um, so I never had any of that, but, but yeah, like I said, sometimes with the anxiety and the emotional stuff, like that would go up and down and then, um, you know, digestive stuff. Sometimes that would, that would be really good. And then sometimes I would kind of like things would, you know, feel really uncomfortable for a while. And, and just like, and through the process of it all, like I've learned so much over the past four years that now I understand it better than I did back then. And like why those things were happening. And, you know, if that was normal and, um, you know, what, what wasn't normal, I guess you could say. Um, so I've learned a lot now, um, and fully understand it better, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's what it was like for me. So, and, and if you got those flare ups, like the anxiety, did you start um, doing anything besides eating differently or did you start to incorporate any kind of supplements to help you out? Yeah. So, um, with the anxiety, one supplement that really helped me at the time was magnesium L3 innate. Um, that was, that was helpful. And let's see. And also I remember trying Pharmagaba and I got the wrong brand and, um, I remember thinking like, yeah, this didn't really make a difference for me but it was definitely because I didn't get the right brand. And, um, and now sometimes I will use Pharmagaba. Like um, the last year was like a really difficult year uh, for me and my family. Um, and so I was, I have been, you know, go, I was going through periods of like really bad anxiety. And so since then, since learning what the right kind of Pharmagaba to get is, um, I have found it really helpful. Um, but back then, yeah, uh, magnesium three and eight was really great. Um, let's see what else I think also, Oh, you know what else I found really helpful was going into an infrared sauna. Um, something about the warmth would just really help me calm down. It would help my nervous system to like relax. And so, I found that really helpful. Um, also, of course, like um, doing things like EFT or, um, you know, I went, I had gone to like see a therapist as well to just like help me um, through like the, the difficult things that like um, chronic illness, like, you know, brings up. And so I had been going to see a therapist already before like um, medical medium, but doing that also helped me get through like the times of anxiety. Um, so that was like, I was really grateful to be able to have that. And what else? Yeah. And just, you know, things like meditation, um, spending time outside when I could. Um, his book had come out in November. So it was like right before, you know, winter was about to start. So I remember in the beginning, I was like cooped up inside a lot. And um, so, yeah, once the weather started to get warmer, like that helped as well. And um, just, you know, going outside. Um, but even still, sometimes I'd go outside and walk around in the snow and walk, you know, with my dog and stuff. And that was always nice. And um, and then, yeah, I, um, yeah, just like meditations and stuff. And of course, like incorporating the soul healing meditations and like praying to the different angels that Anthony talks about in the first book, like all of that helped. And, you know, I had to, I had to really find what like worked for me. Um, so, so yeah, so I know for everybody that's 
a little bit different, but that's what I found really helpful. And a lot of those things I still do today um, if I notice anxiety comes up. And that's very interesting to hear that it's not just about incorporating the right foods and the right supplements, but also about incorporating other things that can help to ease that. Not just for yeah. anxiety, but for also other symptoms as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's like healing from chronic illness is not just about diet and supplements. It's, it's a holistic, um, I like to take a holistic approach and by taking that kind of approach, you have to like treat yourself from all different angles. Um, you know, so, so yeah. And if, um, did you ever get cravings during your time for <laughs> junk food or anything else like oh pizza or something? Of course, of course. Um, How did you deal with that? Well, one of my favorite fruits is definitely dates. So I am, I have more of a sweet tooth. And so what I used to crave all the time was chocolate, you know, and sometimes I still crave it. I like, I'm not going to lie. Um, well, I actually st stopped craving it. I, did I, you? Yeah. Oh, what was your I, secret to that? Just... Just, it just I don't know. It, it just went away. I, in the beginning, I ate a lot of carob nice cream and mm -hmm. Me too. carob mango pudding and everything with carob. And after a while, it just, I don't need it anymore. It's nice to have it sometimes, but I don't need chocolate. I'm rather craving the date than chocolate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the longer you stay away from something, the less and less you crave it. So yeah so don't go near it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i can't digest it well anyway yeah no yeah it's not good it's not good for strep it's really and of course the adrenals um but uh yeah i craved chocolate what else i did not crave meat at all um you know, certain junk foods, of course, like if you see a picture or you like smell things like pizza or um, mac and cheese, like especially if you're really hungry at the time, like of course you're going to crave that. So, so I would make, you know, my own sort of like healthy versions of it. And that was always good enough to me. Uh, let's see what else, but, but I will say the dates really helped me to get past any sort of like sweet tooth cravings. And Same so I, yeah, I would, I would, I would just eat plain dates. I would make like different date, you know, dessert recipes. Like, like there's like, um, I've seen like raw Snickers recipes and I would, I would make that, but you know, make it with like carob instead of chocolate. And, oh, those were so good. Those were so good. And I would, you know, eat things like banana ice cream. And, um, you know, I was, I've never been a big like ice cream person, even though I like sweets. Um, so, so that wasn't a huge um, deal to give that up. Um, plus, I had already given it up for so long. But uh, I think also, like chips and something crunchy. Yeah, um, that's what I also crave from time to time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, I wasn't always great about that. Like I would find like healthy alternatives, like, um, like crackers, healthy crackers that are just made from like nuts and stuff. Or sometimes like I'll admit, like I would have like the, the rice chips. I forget what brand they were or not chips. They were like just plain, just like brown rice crackers. And that's, all that they were made from. And so sometimes I would have those, but um, I remember at some point, at one point I was like, okay, <laughs> I have strep. Like it's good to stay away from grains if you have strep. So I finally gave that up. Um, but and also corn, like it's also corn. a grain, but. Yeah, yeah. That was uh -huh. the hardest for me because when I crave something crunchy, cornflakes was something that I used to love. Crunchy. Right? besides celery sticks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, the, I don't know what it is. There's just something so satisfying about 
the crunchy, crackery, dry, like, I don't know, flavor and texture of different things. It's just so satisfying. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, and that's honestly, like, that's something that I still get cravings for. And I just, you know, I reach for healthy alternatives or I have a dehydrator. So sometimes I will make my own crackers um, with like flaxseed and I don't know, sometimes I'll use like leftover like juice pulp and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> those are the things I craved and that's, that's what I did. Yeah, we just have to struggle through it and yeah, sometimes, think about healthier alternatives. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. And then I think, I think also it's learning to like understand your cravings and like why you're craving certain things. So like, you know, oftentimes like I'll crave like really like, like cakes or like, you know, pizza or mac and cheese, like when I'm really hungry or like haven't had enough calories. So, um, so like to me, like that's like a sign that, um, you know, I need to eat more. Um, sometimes cravings can come up when you're like detoxing. Um, so that's good to also know. Um, you know, sometimes like if you're craving really salty things, you need more mineral salt. So like what I'll do is I'll like, I really like the way barley grass juice powder tastes. So I'll just eat like a Me lot too. of that and, um, yeah. Or like a lot of like spinach, um, or just like really salty vegetables, of course, like celery, um, cucumbers. Um, and then, like I said, if I'm craving something sweet, I'll often reach for dates or like make something maple syrup. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we do a lot of very similar things. Yeah. I also love eating the barley grass juice powder just as it is. It's so, so good. good. So good. I love it so much. If it weren't that expensive, I would probably eat more of it <laughs> straight from the bag. Same. <laughs> Sometimes still though, I still like, I just go for it. I'm like, okay, well I need this. So yeah. 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 So um, let's talk about uh, raw food or cooked food. Did you have a time in your healing journey when you went all raw to get a quicker healing or better healing than with just cooked foods for dinner maybe yeah so um i've never really been super strict about being all raw um or or not um i've always just kind of like listened to my body um and i like i said like over time like i've learned more about you know, medical mediums information and then just like about how my body feels with certain foods. And so I've been able to tell like when I need to eat more cooked food or when I need to eat more raw food. And, um, you know, I will say living in Hawaii, it's way easier to eat raw food most of the time because it's just warmer. Um, so naturally living out here, like I feel more called to raw foods. Um, but that being said, like, um, there have been times where like I've done like a month, you know, like doing his 28 day cleanse. Um, I've done a month of just raw food and been really strict about it. But I honestly, I think that's the longest I've gone because usually what I'll do is, um, just, I don't know, like I said, I I'm drawn to more raw foods living out here, but still like every now and then like um, I'll have something cooked or like, you know, like if I go out to a restaurant, I'll try and get something cooked because um, it's, it's, healthier. it's better to, it's to do that. Yeah. It's safer to do that to avoid any possible, like picking up any possible bacteria or anything like that. So, so I've always remained kind of flexible for those reasons to be able to still have like a life and be social and stuff. Um, and of course, like I know there's plenty of raw vegans who will bring, you know, bring their own food to a restaurant. Um, but that's just actually something I've never done. And um, maybe I can try it in the future, but, um, but yeah, I just prefer to like remain flexible and, 
just to order something at the restaurant and um and yeah yeah and so you're saying that um healing is not just uh about being strictly raw you can also eat a lot of cooked food and still have a profound healing and a good healing yeah i mean that's been that's been my experience i mean i think i think for people who like want to do all raw i think that that's fantastic and people will experience like a lot of healing from doing that um it's very it's a very cleansing lifestyle um It gives you tons of energy, you know, for the most part. It depends on um, what underlying health conditions people have um, because, you know, some people might find that they're really tired. It's, there's a lot that um, can, af can like make the experience different for some people, but generally, you know, um, eating raw foods will give people lots of energy. Um, it's actually, people think that it's really hard on digestion, but it's actually like way easier on your digestion to eat all raw. Um, and, uh, yeah, but I, I totally am an advocate for like being able to incorporate cooked foods into your diet. Um, and knowing that 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 you can still heal doing that. Like potatoes are such a healing food and they're a staple for many people I know, um, especially people who are doing medical medium. Um, so, so yeah, I think, I, I think cook foods are totally, I give it a thumbs up. Yeah, me too. As soon as I went more onto the medical medium lifestyle and off a little bit from the fruitarian raw vegan lifestyle i started incorporating more steamed vegetables or cooked foods again nice yeah yeah and how has that been for you pretty good especially um when i eat things like sweet potatoes or pumpkin if i eat that raw i realize that it digests not that good as if i eat it steamed oh how would you eat it raw before would you just Slice it I was really trying to make something like a pumpkin soup when I threw the uh, raw pumpkin into the Vitamix and blend it all up with other ingredients. Taste-wise, it was really good, but I always noticed that it really slowed down my digestion. Interesting. Okay, I've never tried that before, so that's good to know. Yeah, That makes a lot of sense, too. Yeah, because if it's raw, then it's full of starches. And once it gets cooked, they all turn into simple sugars. Exactly. Yeah. And are way more delici delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like warm and comforting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's great. So a final question that I have for you that I ask all of my participants is, if you could start all over again, would you do it all the same or would you start doing things differently from what you know now? No, I think, I honestly think I would do it all the same. I mean, I think, I think that you have to, um, I think sometimes you have to go through different challenges um, and different experiences to be able to um, learn. And so I think that by any sort of like, you know, like I said, challenges or difficult experiences um, that I went through, um, it was all, you know, I gained a lot from it because of what I learned. And, you know, and I've been able to like use it in my health coaching practice. And um, so, no, I wouldn't do things differently. Like, you know, maybe, like I said, there were some mistakes that I made, like, you know, eating, um, eating nutritional yeast or like vinegar in the beginning. Maybe I, I would go back and just like get rid of that sooner, but I, you know, whatever, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, I know better now. Um, Yeah, I think I honestly, I think I would do it all the same. <laughs> I really, That's cool. yeah. And like I said, it was a pretty easy transition for me because I had already been eating like, you know, pretty healthy. 
Um, so, and I already had known a lot about like health and wellness and like healing and, and, and diet stuff. And I was really into like cooking at the time. Um, so it wasn't like a big, a, a huge overwhelming transition for me. Um, and so I feel like because of that, maybe also, um, is why I wouldn't change anything, but yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I'm happy with how things have gone. That's great. You're a very great example for a lot of people. <laughs> um, thank you for saying that. I, um, you know, I, I don't know. I just try my best, you know? Um, and, and I think a lot of the, uh, reason that I do it is because I genuinely just like want to feel good. And, um, uh, you know, that's always like been my motivation behind it. And I know it's the same for a lot of people. So um, I just am trying to do my best so that I can, you know, feel good and heal. And um, yeah, so I guess, you know, people find that inspiring. But honestly, I, I think, yeah, anyone naturally who, um, you know, is, is sharing their journey and um, is wanting the same thing, they're going to be inspiring too. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you also started um, coaching people. When yeah. Did you get started into that? Well, um, right before I found Medical Medium's book, I had also uh, enrolled in a coaching program with the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And because um, I knew at that point that I had already wanted to be a health coach. <clears throat> so so yeah, so that whole first year um, of doing medical medium, I was going through. I was going through school, and then um, the and then after I graduated, I shortly after moved to Hawaii, and you know that transition. You know, it it took me some time to like, you know. Um, get grounded and feel like stable here. So I didn't start doing the coaching right away. Um, but then after about, I don't know, six months to a year of being here, that's when I started just like slowly doing like some coaching, like, I don't know, like a session, you know, once a week or, you know, once what even sometimes like once every two weeks, um, and, and still doing like other work on the side. And then, um, yeah. And then after a while, I just started getting more like requests from people, like, um, especially like, I don't know if you remember, but like I did that whole like thyroid rehab challenge, yes. you know, a couple years ago. And so that got a lot of attention and, and by doing that, like more people wanted to work with me. And so that just really like pushed me and like catapulted me into doing like more and more coaching. And, and now, yeah, now I do it full time. Um, yeah, it's really, it's fun. It's exciting. I've learned so much from helping other people. I've learned so much. Um, and yeah, I've met, I've come across like some of the greatest people because of working, you know, as a health coach and, yeah, my, you know, a lot of the clients that I've worked with have been really cool and just really special. And it's been an awesome experience. I can imagine. So how can people reach out to you if they want to find you? Yeah, so um, Instagram, of course, uh, Lauren Henry Health is my Instagram name. And then also, um, I have a website, laurenhenryhealth.com and I have a YouTube page which is also titled um, Lauren Henry Health. Um, it's all the same just so that it's streamlined and yeah those are the three best ways to reach me. Awesome. Yeah. So I guess we're coming to an end. Thank you for joining in and sharing all of your wisdom with us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And, you know, thanks for always being an inspiration to me and to so many other people as well. And thank you. Um, 
yeah, I'm excited for, you know, your summit to come out and to hear the other speakers. And you know, there's a lot of people with really incredible stories. And um, yeah, so I'm just grateful to be able to be a part of it all. Me too. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so that's it for today. We're wishing you all a great day and enjoy your time. Reach out to all of the healing health warriors if you need more help. And yeah, that's it for today. We see you. Bye. <laughs>